God. He said, how can you hate a man like this? See the good he has done. In different kingdoms, of the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, the kingdom of Belshazzar, and in my kingdom, Darius, you want to kill a man like this. And so the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the lions, into the den of lions. Well, you see what happened to them. They were destroyed before they got to the bottom. Those lions ate all of them up. Because we're told in Psalm 9, let's look at Psalm 9. From verse 15, Psalm 9, verse 15, The heathen are sunk down into the pitch that they made. Their decree caught up with them. Their hatred caught up with them. Their evil imagination caught up with them. Their destructive spirit destroyed them. The heathen are sunk down in the pitch that they made, in the net which they had, which they hid in their own, is their own food taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is sneered in the work of his own hand. In verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and the nations and all the nations that forget God. They wanted Daniel to die. Did Daniel die? Who are the people that died? The persecutors. Those people, those were the people that died. What a man sows, he shall reap. I pray God will clear every form of hatred from every heart in Jesus' name. When you have hatred in your heart, you don't hurt the people that you hate, you hurt yourself. When you dig a pit for a man to stumble and to get in, you don't make a man to fall, you make yourself to fall. And when you want to be a destroyer of a person like Daniel, righteous Daniel, a Daniel that had revelation coming from God to the people, when you want to destroy a man like that, you destroy yourself, I pray God will deliver you. Psalm 7, I'm looking at Psalm 7, we're looking at it from verse 13. Psalm 7, Looking at verse 13, Psalm 7, verse 13, it says, He has also prepared for him the instruments of death. He has ordained his arrows against the persecutors. He has he ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Don't ever join the persecutors of Daniel, righteous Daniel. Don't ever join the persecutors of Peter, of Paul, of the servants of the living God, of the believers of the children of God. Because the Almighty God ordains His arrows for the persecutors. Those persecutors, the arrows of judgment, the arrows of the wrath of God, the arrows of indignation will come upon them. And if they don't repent, if they die in that state of persecution, they'll die and go to hell. I pray that God will deliver you in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good amen. amen. Psalm 34, I'm reading from verse 21. Psalm 34, verse 21. Evil shall slay the wicked. You see, the people who are wicked, they do not know they are hurting themselves. The people who refuse to repent, they do not know they are hurting themselves. What if at the time Daniel was picked up out of that lion's den? What if those people prostrated and they began to plead? And they said, we have seen our error. We have seen our evil. We have seen that, you know, we plotted and we planned evil for a righteous man. And now the Lord has delivered the righteous man. We are sorry. Oh God, forgive us. Daniel, forgive us. King, forgive us. They will not have died, but they just stayed there in their sin. And he that has been often reproved and hardened his neck shall perish and that without remedy. That's why it happened to them the way it happened to them. It says in verse 21, evil shall slay the wicked. And they that hate the righteous, tell me the rest. They that hate the righteous shall be desolate. If you love God, you'll not be desolate. And the hand of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord will be with you and for you forever in Jesus' name. But those who hate righteousness and they hate the righteous and they hate the preachers of righteousness. 
Those are the people that the judgment of God will come on if they don't repent and then they'll be desolate in Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs 11, I'm reading from verse 6. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness, in their own stubbornness, in their own self-will. It says that the righteousness of the upright, how do you become upright? You turn away from sin. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary. And because of that death, they died on the cross of Calvary to become your substitute and your savior. You say, Lord, I believe in you. I turn away from my sin. I turn away from my wickedness. I turn away from my evil. And because you turn away and you put your faith in Christ, then you are born again. All your sins are forgiven. And the Lord will look at you as if you have never seen the righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. And every time you get into trouble, you get into any problem, the Lord delivers you because of that righteousness of the upright. Look at the second part of that verse 6. For transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness, stubborn self-will. And then it says in verse 7, when a wicked man dies, his expectation shall perish. And the hope of the unjust, of unjust men, perisheth. Verse 8, the righteous is delivered out of trouble. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. That's how God delivered Daniel. Look at what follows in verse 8. And the wicked cometh in his stage. The trap, the snare. The destruction, the desolation that that wicked one planned for the righteous then comes upon him. I pray the Lord will deliver in Jesus' name. Daniel, you understand? Raised no voice. He had no hand in the punishment or execution of those persecutors. As a believer who was wholeheartedly committed to the word of God, he had charity towards all and malice towards none. Throughout this chapter, he was remarkably quiet and he did not raise his voice in protest or self-defense. But justice caught up with those evil doers. They were cast into the same den of lions into which they had cast Daniel. Very often wicked men fall into the same pitch that they dig for others. God always turns the malice and the cruelty of the wicked upon their own heads. But what are we to do towards those persecutors, the people that do not know God, and the people that are trying to destroy the righteous? What do we do? We pray for them that God will forgive them. That God will save them, will be preaching to them. But for us, we make sure that we don't join those wicked people to plan any evil sin against any righteous, any child of God, or against anybody for that matter. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18, we're looking at verse, verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, tell me the rest, it shall die. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. All these things are written for our admonition, warning us that we should not be wicked as they were wicked. We should not be envious as they were envious. We should not be jealous as they were jealous. We should not persecute as they persecuted. Because it happened to them like that. You might say, okay, look at them. Bad luck for those people. They were cast into a lion's den and then they died like that. But the Lord is saying, learn from that. Learn a lesson from that. In Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 13, verse 1. There were present at that season some that told of the Galileans whose blood Pilate mi mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such faith, such things? Nay, I, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. That's the warning the Lord is giving us today. Suppose ye, that those princes, counselors, 
and those persecutors suppose she that they are more sinners greater sinners than the people living today no people living today they, too, they have jealousy they have envy they have hatred and they plot and plan against the righteous and the lord is saying see what happened to them and he says i tell you nay except you repent you shall all white likewise perish look at chapter verse 4 or those eighteen upon whom the tower side lo and fell and slew them think ye that they were sinners above all the men that were in jerusalem i tell you nay but except she repent ye shall all likewise perish the Lord is saying that he deals with justice, with everyone like that. Anyone that remains in sin in evil. And he says, the secret of avoiding, escaping the judgment of God is repentance. And everyone that has not known the Lord, that has not given his life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is calling you to repentance. And when you repent, the Lord will forgive in Jesus' name. Come back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. In verse 20, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, Therefore, I will judge you, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. That's the message the Lord is giving us, that those people that plotted and planned and persecuted Daniel, they were cast into the lion's den, and they died prematurely and went to hell. And the Lord is saying that so that such a thing will not happen to us, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit, for why will ye die? The Lord is saying, make you a new heart, turn around, be a new creature. Let the blood of Jesus wash and wipe away and blot out every sin and every evil and give you a new heart, a new spirit, a new life, a new direction in life so that iniquity will not be your ruin in verse 32. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, says the Lord God. Wherefore, read it out. Again, who oh, will turn? I said, who oh, will turn? Is a person. Turn yourselves and leave ye. And the Lord has given us his promise that if we turn away from sin, the Lord will have mercy upon us. And the Lord will grant forgiveness and salvation to everyone that will call upon the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, whatever anybody has done in the past, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And with that salvation, then we have the grace of God and the righteousness of God. And then we escape the judgment of God and we come into justification and will not be judged anymore in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. We have learned quite a lot today. That the Lord himself will take these words that we have learned and the Lord will make them to produce good fruit in every one of our lives. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. We we'll sing Daniel, righteous Daniel, pure Daniel, sanctified Daniel. We we'll sing Daniel, how Daniel remained with the Lord. And even though persecution came, trial came, even though fur indignation came from those presidents and princes, and yet he stood, he stood firm. You pray that the Lord will help you, that whatever the hatred of the people of the world, the persecution of the people of the world, the animosity of the people of the world, the persecution against your life, you pray that God will help you to stand, give you grace to stand in righteousness and holiness all the days of your life. Is the Spirit of God bearing witness with your heart that you are a child of God? No hatred? No jealousy? No envy? 
no plot, no plan to do evil, no evil imagination against your neighbor, against anybody around you, no desire to hurt, to harm anyone. If a sin in your life, private sin, overpowering sin, that you are not able to overcome, yielding to sin, it's because you are not born again. You tell the Lord, oh Lord, forgive, and the Lord will forgive. Why will you die? Turn away from sin. Call upon the name of the Lord. Salvation is the greatest gift you can have from the Lord. Forgiveness of sin. Righteousness. Through the atonement of Jesus Christ who suffered and died for you on the cross of Calvary. That's what the Lord wants to give you. Think over your life. Is the Spirit of God bearing witness with your heart to a child of God? They that are born after the flesh persecute those that are born after the Spirit. If you're a persecutor, injurious person, that means you are born after the flesh. You have evil imagination, plot, plan to persecute, to destroy. To destroy Daniel. Because of the favor upon his life. Because of the revelation the Lord has given him. You want to hinder the proclamation of the gospel to the Gentiles. And because of that, you want to plan and plot and persecute. Daniel, Paul, Peter, those proclaimers of the gospel message. The Lord is saying, repent. If you are committing sin secretly, adultery, fornication, stealing, drunkenness, lying, covering up evil or flattery, the Lord is saying, repent. Why will you die? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But turn, make you a new heart, a new spirit. For the Almighty God has no pleasure in him that dies. But that you will turn, you repent and live. Tell the Lord to grant you grace, strength, spiritual strength, power, might, and energy. The power of the Spirit. So you will live to please the Lord. No sin, no error, no fault, no evil. Found in your life like Daniel. There to be a Daniel. Paul the Apostle said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And Daniel was who he was by the grace of God. And that grace is available to you, available to him for everyone. Why don't you come and receive the grace of God? Why don't you come to God tonight and receive the grace of God? He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. He'll wash you. He'll purge you. Make you upright. Make you righteous. 
They'll take away that bitterness of heart, that hatred, that jealousy, that envy. Make you free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free from sin, free from hatred, free from jealousy, free from envy, free from the desire to hurt, to harm, to persecute, to kill, to destroy other people. You will not have any wish that Daniel should die anymore. You'll not have any wish, any desire that anyone should die anymore. You'll not take joy, delight in the death of anyone anymore. Neither will you support any law, any decree. That anyone should be cast into the lion's den. You're a believer. You're born again. You're righteous. You're going through persecution. Trust in the Lord. Believe the Lord. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround them that believe. And he gives the angels charge over us, over the people of God, over the righteous, that will not dash our feet against any stone, that no lion will be able to destroy us. He delivers, he rescues, he preserves. His own. If you are going through persecution, pray that the Lord will preserve you from persecution, from the pain, the peril of those persecutors. And pray the Lord will give you strength to stand firm to the very end. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But she that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Hold on to the promises of God. A God cannot fail. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. To forsake Christ, to forsake God, don't allow anybody to deceive you and tell you are going through so much, so much persecution, so much sickness, so much difficulty. Why don't you come to this other side? There is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Know that God anywhere. Know the religion.